Hi, my name's Kate Worth, and I'm one of the emergency medicine consultants. I'm going to talk you through our patient management system. Um, this the one we use is called Nerve Centre. You may have come across it before, either in UHL or across other trusts. It's becoming quite common now. Um, I'm hoping to not take too long. It's going to be a bit of a whistle-stop tour. Um, most of what you will gain from using the system, you will learn on the shop floor. So the first thing when you open up nerve centres, you'll see there's different tabs along the cross here, along the top. Um, we're looking for patient lists mainly, or that you can search search for particular patients by using patient detail those are the main two that we'll use when you're looking for a patient list you're really looking to see um all the patients that are in the particular area area that you're working and you can do that by going to this tab up here so at the moment one blue ed um so that's part of our emergency department but you can look for example for the emergency room um for ed red majors um, for ED children's or for example walk in assessment or ambulance assessment we'll stick to blue ED all for now um, and the other thing you need to make sure is that we're on the ED dashboard because there's different dashboards available and um, it gets very confusing if you don't use the right dashboard so stick with that one now this is a test module so uh, you will see that we've got some children here in um, blue adult ED, which we wouldn't normally have. So just bear with me, normally the patient's names would be here. The first thing to tell you as we're going left from right is um, this thing here, DPS, that stands for Dynamic Priority Score. That really means sort of it gives you an awareness of how much acuity there is in the department. So normally, for example, patients with a DPS score of one um, would be the um, one to wants to be seen faster or needing something done immediately for example such as needing analgesia or a catheter or something like that um down to two and then three most patients would be dps3 you do occasionally see patients with a dps4 that's really referring to somebody that's probably got uh, primary care needs and might not need to be seen in the department we don't tend to use it very often we might end up using it more as we go into winter just so that we can identify the sickest patients first there may be an allergy status recorded. You can uh, hover over that box and see that Mr. Uh, Fock test has got a peanut allergy, but don't rely on that purely. Not all allergies are recorded. You may also find that the patient's got a specific alert attached to them, such as them, for example, having a bloodborne virus or having uh, an epilepsy, prob a ep epilepsy problem, for example, and they might need to be thinking about prescribing time critical medications. Um, and sometimes you might see, for example, somebody that's um, we know quite well and comes to the department quite a lot, such as a frequent tender. And these patients may have a care plan um, stored on a separate drive, which we can obtain from reception. Don't worry too much about this NHS 111 tab. That just refers to patients that have been uh, sent to us via the NHS 111 uh, system. And COVID, we use these quite a lot, the lab results, um, at the beginning of the pandemic. So the COVID, these ones refer to uh, positive results from patients that have been admitted. Uh, I believe this one refers to positive results in the community. They're often not up to date. So just because it says it's positive there doesn't mean that the patient's currently got COVID. This result may be from quite a long time ago. So when you open up the patient, you can see how old that result is. Uh, the gender of the patients is listed there along with the age. This talks about how long we've been in the department. So obviously, these patients have been here a very long time. That's uh, because of the test module. Um, most of the junior doctors don't need to worry too much about this assessment um, tab here. This is really just referring to what sort of assessment the patients had when they came in, whether they've been seen by a nurse or by a doctor. And this will show you exactly which part of the department they're in. So all these patients are in blue. Uh, but when you work in the top department, you'll realise that we've got a trolley area and we've got an ambulatory area. Um, so that really denotes where you're going to find the patient along with the exact location of the patients in a room. Um, this tab here will show you if there's a particular nurse attached to the patient, a named nurse, which there usually is. So it shows you which nurse you need to approach, for example, if you want to discuss the patient or need anything specific doing. And this um, denotes basically which doctor, or which clinician has picked up the patient. Okay, so you can see which patients still need to be seen because they don't have a name on versus the patients that have already been picked up. SR stands for senior review. So once you've discussed your patient with the senior person running your area, they will put this little tick on to show that they know about the patient and that gives them situation awareness. Um, EWS is the early warning score. So we've now got EOB, so this will update automatically and you'll see this here. 
frail refers to the Rockwood Clinical Frailty Score. So, for example, um, you can identify frail patients quite quickly. This may not be up to date, so this will probably only be um, completed if the patient's been there before. I'm not really sure why this five-year-old has got a frailty score of seven. Um, obviously, that's not appropriate, but as I say, it's a test version. Here's the diagnosis, and then this is the task. So these are outstanding tasks still to be done. We'll talk about that in a moment. CRIPT stands for uh, clinically ready to proceed. So you don't usually need to put this on yourself. The senior doctor will put this on when they're happy that the patient has had the emergency care that they require and is safe to go on to the next area. And this is usually the plan. So for example, um, the plan can be written as a query. So this patient's query for cardiology um, or there can be an actual bed request on. You know, then there's a bed request on because the, the entire box gets coloured in with a colour. Okay, so... Um, let's imagine that we need to go and see this patient. So uh, we'll talk about Ruth Peterson, who's the next priority one patient. So we'll double click on her. <coughs> they will bring up this um, patient detail box. Now you see at the top, we've gone to the patient detail box. Um, and you can usually work with the ED clinician box here. So for example, you'll need to show that you're going to go see the patient by double clicking on here or single clicking. And you can set your own name there. But this version often seizes up a little bit when I do this. I'll just wait for it to unseize. Okay, so you can click your name in the scene by box there. As you go down, you'll be able to see that the patient's got potential allergies, um, a DPS. And I just want to let you know about the progress notes box. Now, there's not anything written in this box for this patient, but this is where you'll often find a lot of useful information. So this is, for example, is where you'll find the triage history that's been taken by the nurse or if the patient's already been seen by a clinician or the team leader may have written something in here. One thing that's really important to not write in here, guys, is please don't copy and paste investigation results into here. OK, we've had a serious incident where um, once again, with copying, pasting, don't ever copy and paste anything where the wrong investigation results were pasted into the progress notes and the patient was mismanaged as a, as a result. And what actually happened is the patient had got quite a severe intra-abdominal pathology and that wasn't handled appropriately and the patient sadly died. So please don't copy and paste uh, stuff into the progress notes, OK? Right, so you'll come along here and you'll notice that the patient's got their observations. So we're really fortunate that we use EOBs. The nurses will usually put those directly into their iPhones so you can see what the patient's OBS are and you can scroll backwards and forwards to see if they've had uh, what the trend is over the course of the day. Uh, and when you come down here, there may be some uh, assessments that have already been done. Now, you may not use these a lot, but they can be really helpful so you may find that, for example, you can do a uh, frailty score assessment. You can assess the patient for delirium. If you're working in paediatrics and you've got a 16 or 17 year old and you want to do a young person safeguarding assepsis, then you can do that here as well. The sepsis assessments can be done on here. Lots of useful tools that I would advise you to be comfortable with and use. Then you've got access to lots of different external applications um, and you should have Many of these will open spontaneously. So, for example, if you want to look at the patient's radiology, uh, you can open packs and it should automatically upload with the patient's details. You can um, upload ICE, um, lots of very useful things here. CETO is our um, information portal for scanned notes. So, for example, if you want to look at previous attendances or clinic letters, you'll be able to see that on CETO. And this is really important. So, I want to make sure everybody knows about this. This is the EMAS record. EMAS, if you don't know what it stands for, is the East Midlands Ambulance Service. So patients that arrive by ambulance um, will um, have an electronic record of what's happened to them before they've come to the hospital. Now we've, once again, I'm not wanting to scare you, but we've had incidents before where this record hasn't been looked at and doctors haven't realized, for example, that patients have had significant head injuries or been obviously septic in the community and um, not realise that and mismanage the patients. So you must check this record if the patients arrive by ambulance. If you don't have access, then you need to get access. I'm not going to go through it at length now, but that's one of the things that we can give you information about when you start. 
Okay, <clears throat> let me go up here and you've also got previous visits so you can see if the patient's been uh, to the department before or been admitted to the hospital recently. It will show the visit details and um, it's often quite useful, for example, if patients have presented the last week or two to have a look what's happened. The patient may be representing and you obviously want to know what's happened before. That's really important. So make sure you're aware of that. And then we've got tasks here. So this is things that um, this is both tasks and referrals. So if you click on here and you want to add a task on, for example, your patient's septic and you want them to have some intravenous antibiotics, you'll have a look down there and find the IV medication task, click on it, add it to the system. And then you'll see that there's a task there for IV medication. So lots and lots of different tasks on there that you can use. Um, often sort of uh, this is, um, it may be a task, to yourself to remind yourself to do something or for example for the nursing staff to do something and um, nothing's more important obviously than good communication with the team and it's often worth for, for example just touching base with the nurse that's looking after your patient and letting them know this for example they might have another patient that's taking up their time or that needs to go uh, to scan and they're going to be distracted for a while so it's, it's good practice to let them know um, if there's something on there that needs doing if you've done the task yourself then you can um, click on the task and complete it. So for example, if you were to give a medication yourself, you can complete it and then you know that, that that's been done, okay? Um, finally, it's important to think about referrals. So we do do a lot of our referrals on Nerve Centre. All the different people we can refer to are here or different specialties. Uh, let's imagine that we're going to refer to orthopedics. So we'll click on orthopedics. All the, always when you're doing a referral, it's always urgent. Anything that comes to the emergency department by its nature is an urgent referral. Um, you'd put in your working diagnosis or the diagnosis that you've come up with. So I'm going to put in NUF, which stands for neck of femur fracture. <clears throat> the reason for referral. So there's a few things that come here. You can put advice if you want literally just advice. But otherwise, if you're expecting the patient to be admitted under a specialty, never put advice. Always put review in the department. Or, for example, if you wanted, the, if the patient needs a specialty over at the Glenfield Hospital or Leicester General Hospital, it would be cross-site admission. Same-day emergency care would usually refer to, for example, if we were going to send a patient to a clinic environment such as GPAU, uh, which is the GP assessment unit or the sort of medicine hot clinic. So review in the department, um, pop in your um, reason for why they need it doing. So, for example, a confirmed not. Uh, fall from standing, uh, does own shopping, we could put in the frailty score, um, had FIB, that stands for fascia relax block. So basically I'm saying to the orthopaedic doctor that the patient's been packaged for them um, and needs admitting under them. So you put in your local extension number or your bleep number and add that. And then you will see that there's a referral to orthopaedics. When we go back to the patient list, if we find Ruth again, where's she gone? Usually you would see the task there. Now it's in red and that means that the orthopaedic doctor's not picked it up yet. When they do pick it up, when they acknowledge it, it goes orange. And when they accept the patient, it goes green. So this patient's, uh, that's a task for medication, but this patient's been accepted by ACB, which is a sort of acute care bay in medicine for more poorly people, like a level two area so finally if for example you decide that you are going to admit the patient so not all patients uh, get referred directly to the specialty some patients are admitted directly you can come down to the bed request task here and put in that you're going to request a, a bed so you put in requested for example if I want my patient to be admitted to medicine uh, our medical wards are usually uh, here. So I'm going to put that they're going to the acute medical unit. Um, what's important is you might want to put down any specific bed requirements. So, for example, if the patient's got um, a potential infection that could affect others, you might want to put down a side room. Or if they've got, if you're a bariatric patient, they'll need a bariatric bed. Um, or if they're going to transfer across site, whether they need to be transferred with uh, an AE crew, which is sort of a non paramedic trained crew, or um, an East Midlands ambulance service crew who may have better training. So you need to put those things down. You can put down, for example, the reason why you think the patient can be admitted and then you'll save it.
and you'll see when we go back on that Ruth now has a bed request on for AMU. The bed request will change to green when the bed's ready. Okay, so going back to a couple of other things, if we're going to bring Ruth up again, um, it's quite nice because there's a couple of new things in Nerve Centre. There's EMEDS, but that's not started in a &E yet. So you may be familiar with the EMEDS and prescribing um, part of Nerve Centre if you've come from the wards, but at the moment that's not live in a &E. Um, and then the other thing you've got access to is investigations. So, for example, um, if the patient's got any investigations, such as blood tests, such as imaging results, they'll show up there both now and previous ones. Um, and then if you want to discharge the patient, you depart them here. Now, it's really important when you're just start discharging a patient to not make a diagnosis up. Um, that's really important for a couple of reasons. One, once it's on their medical record, then it stays on their medical record. And if you misdiagnose a patient, then you're doing them a disservice. They may not be able to, for example, to get certain types of insurance going forwards and you're giving false information to the GP. We don't always manage to give a diagnosis to patients coming to ED. So you give it your best kind of um, guess, for example, um, so, for example, we'll just say that the patient in this situation has got a um, closed fracture of a rib. So, it's, if you've just done, you may not have done any imaging that show a closed fracture of a rib. Um, so, we're not entirely sure whether that's possible or not. So, we'll put clinical fracture of left rib. Okay. So we could put that it's a suspected diagnosis. So we've not confirmed the diagnosis, it's a suspected diagnosis. We put on that it's the left-hand side and we save that, okay? It's important to write down any investigations or procedures that the patients had done and what's happened to them. After. But this is the most important thing. When you're discharging the patient off the system, you should really give the GP the right information that they need. So that should include the, what the patients come in with, um, any particularly relevant um, investigation results. Most importantly, what's happened to the patient. So, for example, if you've diagnosed them with a chest infection and you've sent them home with antibiotics, you need to make sure that the GP knows the name of the antibiotic, the dose of the antibiotic and how many days you've given it for. OK, that's really important. Or, for example, if you have stopped any medication, started medication, Another thing that's really important with this is please don't go um, telling the GP what to do with their patient. So, for example, if you think the patient needs to follow up with the GP, you should word that very carefully. You should say um, the patient also mentioned that they'd had a, a, non, a long-standing rash that's been going on for six months. And I've advised them to consult in primary care regarding this, but not telling the GP specifically that they need to see them um, because GPs don't like that. They don't like being told what to do. So, um you need to be very careful about what you put in the letters. Also, what's really important is that you've given information to the patient. So that often we find that patients don't remember the information that we give to them when they come to A&E, &E, and it's really useful for them to have information written down. So you can write this information down for the patient. So, for example, um, if the patient had broken their ribs, then we'd want to make sure that they knew to take regular painkillers, <clears throat> that they need to do deep breathing exercises and for example if they start to feel like they're going to pass out or they feel faint or they feel short of breath and they need to see somebody again and then once you've done all of that you can depart that you can preview the GP letter um, and print it out and give it to the patient okay so you can print that out with your printer and give it to the patient so they've got a copy that's important one other last thing that you will have access to on Nerve Centre, but it's not available here because this is a test version, is at the top here, near the investigations and this depart button, you will have a tab that says primary care. Now, that's really awesome because that basically is a portal into the patient's summary care record held at the GP. And if the patient's given uh, permission for that to be shared, uh, both at the time of the GP service and when you ask them in the department, you can review that. And it's really valuable because it shows you a good summary of, for example, of the patient's past medical history, of their medications, of their allergies, um, and is very helpful. And I advise you to use that. OK, that's a very, very quick run through of most of the functions of Nerve Centre. Um, you just need to get scripts with it on the shop floor, practice it, um, and you should be flying soon. Thank you very much.